we'll just give people another minute, Maria, to arrive. Yeah, and... sure. Just uh, just to say hello, everyone. Welcome to um, today's workshop. Hope you're all well. Um, and we're, as Ali said, we'll just wait a couple more minutes for people to gather and we'll start. Let's soon. see where people are. Ellie, where are you? You're on mute. She's looking. Hi, sorry. Uh, I'm in Southampton. Um, I'm a special uh, primary. Okay. I'm music lead there. Brilliant. Okay, where are you, Donna? Hello, yes, I'm, I'm from Peterborough Music Hub. Ah, right, okay, fantastic. And we've got somebody next to you, which is Helen. Hi there, uh, I'm just a music specialist teacher um, in Edenbridge. All right, okay, we've got, got quite a wide geographical selection today. Um, Maria, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get going. Okay, sure. Um, and um, I'll just kind of introduce everything and how, how things are going to roll. Uh, we've got people joining us. I know people, some people are just finishing school, so they'll be uh, joining us slightly late, but we're recording all the sessions for um, people to catch up with as well. Um, so thank you so much for um, joining us and also to our presenters, some of whom are here and some of who are joining us. Um, we are going to give each presenter about 10 minutes and then we'll have some time for some questions and some discussion before we um, move on to the next one. Um, and we've got really good spread of um, years that we're covering and topics that we're covering um, and geography and I'm starting in, in sunny Scotland today with Vaughan Fleischfresser from Edinburgh Academy Junior School. Um, he's going to be talking about from improvisation to notation so Vaughan I'm going to hand over to you now. Uh, thank you very much Ellie. I'll just uh, share my screen and just in case you are confused, I am in Scotland, but if you pick up an accent, I am originally from Australia. I came here for a nine month holiday 12 years ago. So uh, here I am. And I apologize if I clear my throat a lot during the presentation. I had my vaccine the other day and I seem to have picked up quite a sore throat as a result. So uh, thanks very much for the invitation to share. Can someone just nod if you can see my screen that I'm sharing, is that all good? Yep. Yeah. Great. So I'm going to talk about improvisation to notation. This is a approach to my teaching in the, the junior school. I was uh, originally a secondary teacher for about 12 years and moved into primary about five years ago. And this is something that I have adopted to try and help increase uh, pupils' confidence in creating and especially improvising and linking that to our need in schools here in Scotland to teach a basic understanding of uh, music notation. So I'm going to start by sharing the why behind it, then I will show you the resource that I've created to try and help incorporate this into my teaching and then talk about the benefits that I have seen. So why do I get my kids to improvise and I get them to improvise every single lesson uh, and it's because it helps to build, I feel, their creative confidence moving into the primary phase of teaching I was really taken by how uh, up for doing anything kids were and seeing how when they get to secondary there can be the wall uh, put up in terms of creating. I want to try and break down that wall by starting improvising as soon as possible and I will be uh, looking at why it builds their creative awareness and how it helps to build their creative expression. So I'll just get straight into it. So I have this method of teaching improvisation and linking it to notation, which is a repetitive process where I look at this idea of giving them complete and utter freedom, then giving them something to focus on, and then seeing what happens as a result of what I call this enhanced freedom. And then I repeat that process over and over again. So I go back to freedom, give them some more focus, and then see what happens from there. So I've created a resource for this, uh, called Sound to Simple, which I've just started to create in the last few months. And I created it out of a need to try and engage our kids uh, more enthusiastically with tuned percussion. And then as I was doing this, I thought this would be a great way to progress the improvisation I do with them to give that a bit more structure. So how I start is with just freedom. So I give pupils 
We use this with glockenspiel xylophones and I give them an instrument and then I just get them to improvise along to this very simple backing track. Just a simple funk backing track. The kids absolutely love it. And the things that they create as a result of that is really quite fascinating. You get the kids that just roll, um, move their beta up and down the instrument. You get kids that just go from the highest to the lowest. You get kids that try and create patterns and everywhere in between. So from there, and then you get some kids that don't do anything. They just sit there looking blank faced and other kids who are really enthusiastic. So from there, I then bring in the focus. And this is where I created this resource. And so what I get them to do is I get them to play along with this very simple activity that just starts with C, D, and E. So I created this and we play along to this. And it continues on and goes, each video goes for about a minute 20, and that starts to also use E. And I work through four consecutive videos, which I progress in difficulty through to this one being the last one for those three notes. And so from there, I then go back to this idea of enhanced freedom. So I've given them an idea of some structure. I've got them to focus just on three notes. And so we go back to the glockenspiel and I say, right, we're going to improvise just using those three notes. You can do whatever you want, but you can only use those three notes. And what I find automatically is people become more focused. Those who maybe weren't in tune with the beat have become more in tune with the beat. Those who are being quite random in their sound making start to form patterns based around simplistic rhythms. Those who weren't quite sure what to do just start to simply beat in time on those three different notes. So it helps to provide focus for some and it helps to provide a stimulus for some of the others. Then, and so that's the same backing track as before. Then I go back and I start again. So I say, right now you can do absolutely anything you want. I put on the same backing track or a different one. And I say, you can use any notes, not just those three. And we go and we do it again. And it's quite interesting again to see how that draws focus for some. Some when they have the full canvas of notes again, go into more random uh, sound making, but others, we see the benefit of that focus. So then I move on back to the beginning and I now add in F. continues and we work through another three videos which get us to this one. And so we then we go back to the improvisation. I give them the Glockenspiel again, and now I say improvise just on those four different pitches. And again, with the same backing track from before. And again, what I find is people's creative thoughts become more organized, more structured. Those again, who were struggling with too many choices are helped by that focus. And those who weren't quite sure what to do benefit from the ideas from the backing track. And then one final time, I start again, give them complete and utter freedom, and we see what happens. And then finally, we add in G.
again, the video has progressed through to a slightly difficult, a more difficult one. And so the process continues. Then I get them to improvise whatever they want, sticking to C, D, E, F, and G, along with that same backing track again, or any backing track for that, whether it's based on C major. And then we go from there. And that's how the process continues. I start that in the, well, right from the first year of primary school, and then I use it the whole way through to, we call it P7 here, primary seven. Uh, and it just gets more advanced. I have more backing tracks and more songs to link in with that. Uh, but I do improvisation every lesson. I don't always do the tuned percussion resource. This is something that I dip into and dip out of uh, depending on where we are in the curriculum and what I'm trying to achieve. So the benefits, I've really noticed that this makes kids a lot more confident in just being creative. Some people need the structure, some people like the freedom. So it gives them a bit of both. And I've seen a real uh, boost in collective creative confidence. In terms of creative awareness, using this approach has seen a real building in sense of pulse, sense of rhythm, sense of making patterns, and also structuring any creative ideas and processes that the pupils come up with. And then in terms of creative expression, I have really found that this helps to give impetus to kids, but also helps to give uh, focus to others. It helps them to navigate their creative thoughts. And it also gives a voice to those who don't have one in terms of being able to express themselves and give structure to those who have far too many thoughts and don't know what to do with those thoughts. So I think that's my 10 minutes up. If you're keen on looking at that resource more, if you Google sound to symbol Mr. F, uh, that resource will come up. And it's uh, something I use with uh, boom whackers, I use with tune percussion, but just tying it in with improvisation is something that I have seen uh, a real benefit with. So uh, that's my 10 minutes. Thank you so much, Vaughan. That's absolutely great. Um, Maria, if you want to, yep, yeah, perfect. Go back to, um, to Vaughan for us. Um, that was an absolutely uh, you know, fascinating kind of, you could see the progression coming, you could see the freedom and, and um, you know, all, all of those things. My personal question, well, um, we're waiting for some questions to come up in the chat, hopefully, or if people want to um, kind of just put something in the chat to ask a question. Um, what do you, do you link that at all to singing? And um, the kind of reading, the reading, because obviously there was a big part of the reading notation going on in there. And I'm, I'm guessing, like you said, this is one part of what you're doing. So how do you link that together? Well, that will be something I'll be able to answer next year because we are still unable to sing at all in right. schools in Scotland. So this is something that I have developed uh, since we've come back after Christmas. Uh, so it's, it's brand new. It's something that I've just tried to fill in where our classes would be completely filled with singing. Uh, there is no singing. So that's a question I can't answer yet, but it's something that I would look very much to add into. We do a lot of uh, Kadai based singing in our classroom singing takes up the majority of our lessons so this has been born out of a necessity to uh, do other activities so it's something that I will be looking more to do but uh, I haven't done it with singing at the moment to be honest. Yeah I wasn't really thinking about that because obviously here we can sing in bubbles and and things but you know different places different different things. We've got some really lovely comments coming up that you can probably see. Um, what we're going to do is whilst um, it, Sue, if you want to just load your presentation um, for the next one, um, we're hopefully going to um, we've got a question here from Judith about uh, do you explore phase uh, phrase shaping as part of the journey? Absolutely. So I first I look at just forming patterns, uh, just short ideas. I look at ostinatos, just repetitive ideas, just getting them to give structure to their thought, I always talk with my pupils about how music in its most basic definition is organized sound. Now I know that's quite a, a basic definition, but just try to get, get them to move from random sound making to organized thoughts. So yes, I talk about repeated patterns. I talk about phrasing, absolutely. And yep. it's something that I just develop as I go and it links in with, with other work, whether we're doing um, uh, instruments, whether, because we also teach ukulele, we teach keyboard, or whether it's in creative soundscape making or just random creative tasks, it all links into in yeah. together. Okay, uh, welcome Emma, and um, one final question here from Donna, um, which is, would you use it for a whole class? That's what I have been using it with, absolutely, so uh, I'm lucky to work in a school where we're quite well resourced, I can have two pupils 
her tuned percussion instruments. So, uh, mm -hmm. and so I get them actually, I get everyone to improvise at the same time. Uh, obviously I've got loud speakers, so they're able to do that. And then I get people to, not one kid has ever not wanted to share. They seem really engaged by the, the backing tracks, which I've just created through Garage Band. So we do it as whole class, we do it in small groups. Uh, but yes, this is done completely with a whole class ranging from uh, 18 to 22 pupils I've done it with. Okay, and Ellie's saying she's looking forward to using it with boom whackers um, and complex needs. This sounds really ideal, so. I have, uh, when you go to it, you'll see, I mean, each video takes me about an hour. So it's something that I'm building as I go, but I have done one of them where rather than having the notation, I've just used colored blobs because I was doing it with a, a, a younger class that were, were struggling. And again, because I don't want the notation to turn the kids off, but it's something that I'm required to do. So I did a video for that class where I just did uh, purely the colored blobs. And that's a uh, summer project I've uh, put for myself because I think that was, I saw an instant benefit with that. And with a lot of my, I'm doing this, those activities with my year two, my second year of primary, we call it P2. And we've just been doing it purely with boom whackers and they've absolutely loved it. It's almost more popular than the, the yeah. Glock and xylophone. So it's, I'm seeing a wider benefit than originally anticipated. Thank you so much, Paul. And I, I think you're going to see a few hits on your site tonight. Um, and uh, yeah, there's loads and loads of, of comments coming through. Keep the questions coming for Vaughan and if there's any others, we can share them afterwards. We're gonna move now on to Sue though. So Sue Walker, we're now uh, skipping over to Herefordshire um, from Bosbury Church of England Primary School, who's gonna talk about daily whole class instrumental practice in a rural primary school. Thanks, Ali. Um, I hope everybody can see everything that I'm sharing. Uh, so yeah, it's great to be here. Uh, thanks for having me. So I'm going to be talking about music that I developed over a few years in my school. First of all, if there's any noise in the background, we've got PE going on outside, so I'm just aware of it being a little bit noisy here, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Um, before I talk about it, I, I need to sort of explain myself a little bit. I don't want to go on about that too long, but it's quite relevant to where I am, what I've developed in my school um, and the music education that I sort of believe in. Right, hang on, that's now not moving forward. Bear with me. Let's try that again. Okay. So um, I was, uh, I've got a degree in music and education. I started as a class teacher at a very large school in Croydon with a music coordinator rule. So these are the kind of all, my, all the things that I've done in my career so far. I then went to work abroad and this was the beginning of my career as a music specialist teacher working in the Middle East and then I came back to the UK to do a master's in music education. So I was then a music specialist teacher in numerous schools and eventually became an advanced skills teacher and then a music support teacher. I was briefly uh, worked as a wider opportunities tutor in Sussex for whole class instrumental teaching but it wasn't something I enjoyed. I'll talk about this later, it's kind of relevant to where I am now. So move on a few years, a couple of children later, we moved to Herefordshire, which was the first time I've ever lived anywhere quite so rural. Schools are really small, they're too small, too small to really afford a music teacher for more than a couple of hours a week. Um, and I couldn't really sustain that as the traveling was too much because the county's very, very spread out in terms of schooling. Um, I dabbled in a bit of secondary teaching, which I loved, but then six years ago, after having only taught music for 18 years, I moved back into class teaching in one small primary school, and this is where I am today. Um, and I think that my experience is really relevant to what I'm gonna be talking about and the music that I've built up in my school. Um, so very briefly, my school is in a very tiny village as are many schools in Herefordshire. There are 150 children. The school is at its maximum capacity, five classes of mixed ages pulling in from a very mixed catchment. The head teacher is very, very supportive of all things arts-based and sports. So we have a great creative curriculum planned and we've got a very experienced team of teachers who are all quite, um, well, a bit older, sort of in our 40s, I think most of us. Um, so as this is the first school I've been in full time since I was about 26, it's really enabled me to build a music curriculum that suits the children and my expertise. So this is kind of the list of um, things I was thinking as to what I want to give my kids as, the, as their experiences. So all of them can participate. It's fun, it's meaningful, a variety of musical opportunities, creative, singing daily, freedom within their experiences. The class teacher has to be involved. And um, we have a big support from parents in the community. I've developed a parent choir, or well, before lockdown anyway. Um, and then this last little bit at the bottom I got from the ORF uh, uh, website, which kind of sums up everything really that I'm trying to achieve in, in my school. 
Um, so I want to come back to something I mentioned earlier about being a wider opportunities to so whole ensemble tuition. I don't know how many of you have experienced this before, um, but I was briefly a part of it, but it just didn't suit me or what I believed. So this is kind of what the research states in terms of what makes success in whole class ensemble tuition. So the class teachers involved, the whole school has, has given support. Um, the class teacher receives some kind of CPD, three weekly sessions. They're delivering music throughout the week in addition to this in an ideal situation. But when I was part of this, um, this provision, I experienced this. So it was very much seen as filling a gap. The music hub staff member often just had the TA. Class teacher wasn't often in the room because obviously they've got targets for English, math, science. The curriculum is so crowded, no more music teaching could take place in the week. The class teacher didn't have time to discuss the lesson and receive any support. And they often had a lack of confidence in their music teaching. So that was my own personal experience. And I realize this is different for everybody. Um, so I could see the benefits of the policy but my experiences just didn't sit comfortable with me. And I really miss the special relationship you build with the children when you're teaching them. So in my current school, I decided to try and build it up myself. And I think because I'm in here every day, as opposed to, you know, a snippet of time teaching music in different schools, it's the first time that I've been able to do it. Um, so I wanted to try and kind of build this wider opportunity style curriculum with me delivering it, plus the support of the whole staff, in addition to delivering the national curriculum aspects of composing and singing. So the practicalities of how I've done this, we already had some instruments in school. So we had recorders enough for a whole class. And I started with the class that I was teaching at the time, which was a year three and four class, using old books I had around and CDs and things, um, uh, building up really with different resources. I did that in my own class for a year and all of the quotes around the outside are things that the children said. So I, I gave out questionnaires to the children and I had a really, really overwhelming positive response. The children practiced at nine o'clock every day. I had it as part of my 45 minute music lesson. I'd teach the next steps to the recorder. So the recorder was the first one I taught. Um, we all, after a year, we also had some ukuleles which had never been used. I am not a ukulele player at all. I'd never even picked one up, but I could see we had 15 ukuleles that needed using. So I decided to try and input another class doing the same thing as my class where they were practicing at nine o'clock in the morning. I would go and teach the next step in their music lesson. Um, and then the class teacher would be involved in kind of helping them progress through the week. So we already had 15 ukuleles. We applied for funding to buy more. I used a free resource. And at that time I started in the year one and two class, which I very quickly um, realized wasn't ideal because the fingers were a little bit too small um, at times. So I moved those further up the school and eventually put those into, um, well, in the top two classes initially. So this is what we currently have at the moment. So class, obviously we only have our five classes. Class one is reception and year one children. There are 30 children in the class. They have a 30 minute music lesson with me. And then they are singing every day at 9 a.m. And we do have singing in our school, but we only sing half the class at a time and we have all the windows and doors open. Uh, they have access to um, instruments from all different sorts of percussion. What you can see here in the picture is only really a small selection of what they have, but we've, we've applied for funding for quite a lot of our instruments. And this was a local funding uh, provision from Herefordshire. So class two, they are playing the ocarina. So it's year one and two children. And this ocarina really suits their little fingers. It's a brilliant instrument. Um, there's 30 children. They have a 30 minute music lesson with me and then five minutes of ocarina at 9 a.m. every day with their class teacher. So I've had to kind of give quite a lot of input to the class teachers in terms of what I need them to do each week. And I have to have a discussion with the class teacher every lesson I do with the class to tell them the next step. Um, the resource I use for Ocarina is ocarina.co.uk. That's kind of the only really decent resource I found for Ocarina. There are slight negatives with it. I, I'm not 100% sure it's quite the right resource, but I'm constantly questioning what I'm doing and how I'm doing it and seeing if I can adapt it. And I have written my own music for them occasionally as well. Uh, they have a really good skills progression actually, which is free and you can put into your own uh, school's progression. And I've got funding for those instruments from the EMI Music Sound Foundation. Class three are still doing recorder. So they're currently, it's a year three class, 24 children. They have a 45 minute music lesson with me. 
and then five minutes recorder every day with their class teacher. And I use a big variety of resources for them. I mainly use Charanga, but we also have um, other lots of other books that I've collected. Um, sort of going really back onto what Vaughan was saying about notation, I, I do teach notation. I teach it alongside Ocarina. I teach it alongside Recorder, and I also teach it in the next class, which you'll see in a minute. Um, and it's reasonably progressive, but notation is something that I'm not too fussed about with this because so many children pick it up by ear. My idea is that all the children learn at roughly the same speed. Well, they don't learn at the same speed, but during the week, I'm hoping that they pick up the music. Um, by the end of that week, they'll all have learned that piece so I can then move them all forward at the next week. So some children learn the notation and read the notation off the board and some children learn by ear. And I, I'm happy with either. It doesn't bother me how they learn it. Um, as long as they feel like they're making progress and they feel like they're part of the class. So my current class is uh, class four, and this is a bit of a new um, project for me. So I am a brass player, um, hence why I've, I've desperately wanted to put these brass instruments into my school for quite a long time. And I've looked into P brass and P brass have had great um, reviews. And I went up to see, a, see it in, in use in a school in Manchester, just to see how it, was, how it was being used and how it was being taught. And it was really successful and I loved it. And I came back and we were really lucky and we got funding from our parents association who basically paid for all of the 30 instruments um, and I have a mixture of trombones and cornets so P cornets P bones and then this instrument called a J horn um, because I'm a euphonium player I wanted to have some kind of horn that I could teach as well and it's it's been amazing it's it's been an absolute blast and the and the um, resource called lemon squeezy it looks really old-fashioned but actually it's funky backing tracks and uh, it's three parts so I can teach each part each part separately it's been absolutely brilliant and it's it's always fun first thing in the morning um, and then class five are currently learning ukulele so you have five and six children we have 31 children they have a 60 minute music lesson with me plus five minutes every morning and we use a variety of resources and they were also funded by EMI Music Sound Foundation and we had obviously um, storing the instruments has been an issue so we had a music stand a, a ukulele stand made by a parent which is beautiful I didn't put a picture on it actually of on it of here um, and they they made it and donated it to the school which was amazing and then once a year at Christmas time I have arranged for all the children in the whole school to come together and play one piece of music at the same time and it has been um, a bit of a, an achievement to be honest I haven't tried it with the brass obviously because the brass is in a different key so I haven't quite gone I haven't done that one yet because the brass is quite new but when we had recorders ocarinas uh, ukuleles and then class one were playing lots of percussion and I've done silent night and uh, jingle bells and all sorts of other things and it's, it's just a great opportunity for all the children to all play at the same time and uh, it's been yeah it's, it, it, it was quite a challenge but they did it and it was amazing um, so that's how I run the music in my school so far. Obviously, I do all the national curriculum stuff as well. And we do lots of com uh, composition, lots of singing. But um, the instrumental provision has just been something that's really built um, a great feeling of uh, children pulling together and teamwork within the, each class because each class does a different instrument and they're all really, really proud of what they do and what they've achieved and they play to each other and we perform in front of parents and things like that. So that is my presentation and um, yeah, uh, any questions would be most welcome. Thanks so much, Sue. That was absolutely brilliant and fantastic to see how you bring everybody together through that. Um, whilst the questions might be coming up, we just got a couple of minutes for questions. Um, I was going to ask you about um, the class teachers, getting the class teachers on board, and what would your advice be to the people who are here who might be wanting to do something like that and and get everybody involved? So uh, I think it has to come from the senior management team. And I went, I think what one thing I've learned through my career, so I've been teaching music for 25 years now, and one thing I've learned is that if you've got an idea, go to the head, back it up with as much evidence as you can summon uh, as, much, as much interest and passion as you can get and as long as that head teacher is is willing to take a risk because this is what it was it was a massive risk we spent a lot of money on over the years on these instruments and 
I think if you can get your head teacher on board, I then said to her, look, I, I really want to practice every day because the children aren't going to take their instruments home. Right. I want to, I want them to make progress through the week. I want all the children to kind of be scooped up together and, and to feel like they're all progressing and they're all part of this same team. And I need them to practice every day. And she said to me, brilliant, what time do you want to do it? And I said, nine o'clock, honestly, thinking she was going to laugh me out of her office. And she said, right, nine o'clock, five minutes, five minutes enough. And I was like, yeah, five minutes is enough. And she, she sent out an email that day saying, as of September, this was a few years ago, um, we're going to have all the children playing instruments at nine o'clock every day for five minutes. Sue will help you with training and et cetera, et cetera. And uh, she backed me a hundred percent of the way. And do you do any um, training with the, you know, staff meetings or anything like that? Is yeah, that yeah. You... I've had quite a few staff meetings or in parts of our inset day, she'll give me half a day or she'll let me have half an hour in the staff meeting or, or I'll have I have had individual training sessions with people as well because people have got very different musical backgrounds and that's been that's been quite interesting actually seeing that seeing a few teachers who, who are like no I'm really not musical I can't do this at all and I and I sometimes I've gone in every morning at half eight and gone right next stage do you want do you, are you sure you're okay with what you're doing do you feel comfortable do you remember these notes this is how you do it. This is how I show the children. This is the music. I'll get it up ready. And so I've been very, very active in terms of being involved in making sure those teachers who don't feel confident are confident enough to deliver that little tiny bit of practice. And then the further up they go, the school, the, the more I get the children involved and they kind of lead it for me. I absolutely agree with what Annie's uh, said. Your passion for music is, is truly showing through. Basically, your talk is so much joy. Um, about the music in the school and it's really inspirational so um, thank you so much if you've got any questions to Sue please do um, put them up and we'll try and pick some up a little bit later Annie can we pass over to you um, Sue that's brilliant I hope I get to see that written up somewhere because I think those kind of stories with that five minutes thing and um, being able to convince people that they can they can do that is just absolutely crucial especially in so many schools where they don't take their instruments home that's brilliant Thank you so much. I'm going to introduce Annie to you. Um, right. Um, her students called her Miss G, but I'm going to have a go. So it's Annie uh, Ungen. Um, um, G -an. <laughs> and I, I, I wrote it down phonetically and I still couldn't read my own writing. I'm so sorry. Annie, um, Miss G. Miss G is going to talk to us about um, composing or the simple joys of organising sounds with intention. Um, she's from Mere Green Primary School and she's been involved with the Birmingham um, Contemporary Music Group, I think. So I'll pass you over. Can you see my screen, please, Ali? Yes, we can. Yep. And you can see me as well, yeah? Oh, that's brilliant. Thank you so much. Um, the title of my presentation is uh, Composing or the Simple Joys of Organizing Sound with Intention. I just wanted to say a massive thank you to Nancy Evans because I shamelessly kind of, kind of borrowed this uh, sentence from a post she did on Facebook. And I just thought that it captures what composition is all about so beautifully that I had to use it. It's with permission. So um, yeah, this is it. Com composing or the simple joys of organizing music. I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I'm a music teacher and I'm also an Apple teacher. Um, my background is I come from kind of pop music background. I'm secondary tra trained and I also have a PGC secondary music with QTS. However, I'm currently teaching primary music uh, in Mere Green Primary. You have my Twitter handle and feel free to tw uh, tweet or connect if you want to. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my journey and about rediscovering the joy of composing, about the curriculum links we have in my school and how I build the curriculum. And hopefully by, at the end, I'll answer some questions you might have. Um, I just uh, want to start with my journey um, kind of composing. Um, as a musician, I've never seen myself as a composer. Uh, that comes from my uh, formal education in Bulgaria. Um, I am a performer, so I was singer and always been um, thinking about myself as a singer. And it, that really reflected in the way I was teaching music and um, I was heavily involving performance as part of the way I teach music. However, when you transfer into primary uh, education, uh, 
teaching and composing is a main part of the curriculum. And as I developed my practice, I started to see myself as a musician, not only as a performer. And this notion really informed the way I structured, the way I teach and my approach to incorporating composition in every aspect of uh, the delivery of music in my school. I am to call my students musicians as well, every single lesson, um, as much as possible, just to create this um, vision in them that they're the creators, they're the Im imaginers of music. And we talk about composing since early years, and I, I keep asking them, what is a composer? And what I'm looking for is somebody who imagines music. So I want them to think of themselves as this people that are able to imagine music, that the composer uh, composers in every aspect of it. Our school, I am very, very fortunate to have the absolute dream job. Um, I've been very fortunate to work for the Birmingham Music Service as well. Um, I was a vocal uh, teacher and also thought in um, um, SEND schools. Um, Mead Green is a secondary, uh, primary school, sorry, in Birmingham and is a two form entry school. It's an outstanding primary school and it's part of the Art and Dairy Learning Partnership. All children in Key Stage 2 have access to one to one iPads. In Key Stage 1, children also use iPads, but we have one between two. And we have iPads in um, early years in small groups. Our learning journey is documented using Shobi and music is taught by myself. I teach music from nursery to year six. In nursery, I teach 20, 30 minutes um, specialist input, which is continued through the week um, with the class teachers and the practitioners. In um, key stage one, the children get one hour with me. And then we have singing assemblies and other ensembles. In key stage two, uh, children get between one to hour, uh, one hour 20 with myself as well. Um, we also have five berry teachers who are currently working in Mia Green Primary. We offer uh, individual lessons in piano, uh, violin and cello, uh, guitar, uh, drums. And also we have the music service delivering uh, steel pans and doll drums. The curriculum follows the Swanick model of um, spiral approach where all the skills are delivered uh, on every level. Um, and also I'm following the model that we have across the whole map, which uh, amplifies the ideas of teaching um, knowledge that's at the right time, which helps me link some of my topics to the wider curriculum, uh, but also it de develops the schemata and um, retrieval practice principles and, and the application of knowledge, which is very applicable in practical subjects such as uh, music. Um, Music is fully embedded in every aspect of the school life. And our aspiration is that every child adopts a lifelong love to music. And um, as you can see, I started by thinking about what do I want the children to know by the end of the educational journey in Mia Green and what I can teach. And I have been extremely lucky to have absolute faith in me at any every way of just SOT have been absolutely amazing and they have the approach of try it. So uh, my teaching is based on trial and continuous um, redevelopment of the curriculum. I've been in the school, this is my fourth year teaching in our school. However, I don't think that the last two years have been what I would say a normal year because I had to change lots, but I will talk about it a little bit later. Um, so I'm going to start by talking to you about EYFS and I'm a firm believer that music starts from birth and I have been extremely fortunate to work with some extraordinary practitioners um, that have embedded in me love uh, of music making as play and I started thinking about what I want to teach and going to different conferences and learning about what is out there about early years. As you can appreciate, starting from secondary background, I had very little knowledge about the way early years uh, learn. And what I understand now and what I love about it is that they learn through play. And that's something that's very nicely developed in the Musical Deve Development Matters document, which I use um, to inform my planning and my delivery. This document is created by Nicola Burke, and it really emphasizes the, um, the love for 
that children have uh, to learn and to play. It's something that comes naturally to them. At the end of my presentation, you will get a list with different resources. And I would encourage anybody that wants to look into different ways to deliver EYFS music to look into uh, musical development matters. And what Nicola has done is absolutely outstanding. It really helped me to understand the difference in pedagogy. And some teachers, uh, I still have these conversations all the time with teachers that say that, Early years is not that difficult. What's the difficulty about teaching music? It's completely different pedagogy in my, in my view. And it's so important to approach it with um, open mind and with mind that we learn from the practitioners because they know the children best. Um, music in the race throughout our all areas of learning and development and our children are very, very lucky to have wide range of resources that they have access to. Um, it's to do with creativity, it's to do with their ability to completely take risks and curiosity is in the very heart of what we do in Mere Green. I want to share with you some examples of pupil work. And once again. This is one of them. This is technology used to create a dino wrap. Are you ready to do the wrap? <laughs> yeah. yeah. This was followed once the composition was completed, was followed by our interpretation of the dino wrap using the backing track that a child has created. And the final one. And once again. My um, approach to this is that we talk about composition and improvisation at the same time in the early years. And I just try to um, empower the children through telling them that composing is imagining music, but capturing it in time. Hence why I ask them to repeat their compositions twice to show me that they have fully understood that they can capture these ideas and that have created and share them. Uh, whereas with improvisation is something that they create, uh, however, we might not be able to uh, see or hear again. Okay, so composing in key stage one and key stage two is also in integral to, uh, of, to the music curriculum in Mere Green. Uh, the children are in, uh, encouraged to experiment, create, select, combine sounds. All of this is based on the national uh, curriculum for music. And currently we're exploring the model created by the Birmingham Contemporary Music Group. This was not intentional. However, when I was researching about uh, this presentation, I have noticed that I'm almost up to the T following that the model they have suggested. So um, I believe that it works well. Um, in key stage two, we start the starting point for compo a composition, especially in key stage two, a uh, variety of music genres. So we learn about the 20th century genres and we use technology to um, interpret uh, the features of different musical genres to create our tracks that fit into a genre de de description. Um, technology is integral part of uh, what we have been doing in the past year since the pandemic started because it allows us to have this one-to-one -one, um, iPad and we don't have to share instruments, which could be challenging in time, but we've been in an extremely good situation where we can actually don't need to share anything and that has empowered me to do more and more composition with my classes through feedback from the teacher and the students the children continuously improve their compositions and the process is repeated until a final piece is produced i'm going to share with you a couple of different compositions and i am going to share with you how they have been created but before I move on, I just wanted to talk to you about Garage Band and why I use Garage Band. Garage Band, yeah. sorry. Just a couple of minutes left. No problem. Thank you very much. So Garage Band um, has been part of the, um, the apps that come with the iPads and um, it's completely free. It's um, there for each student to explore and it gives them control way, way beyond the mastery of instruments they might have. 
So here are some examples. This is a blues composition that was created by an EFI student. I'm going to move on. This one is one of my favorite examples. It reflects the work of a child that's actually learning to play the cello. So um, the starting point was a character from the book, um, How to Drain Your Dragon. So each child had to select a dragon and create music to represent that character using the interrelated dimensions of music. Then the other children um, were asked to listen to the music and uh, select the dragon that was presented to the music. And the reality. Um, since the beginning of the pandemic, we had uh, to adapt the ways we work in our in my school and I suppose in many schools across Britain. And we work um, we work very hard to continue delivering music to the highest possible standard. I have taught uh, music through Zoom for the, the majority of lockdown. My absolute priority was to keep music alive. We had singing sessions over Zoom. We had lots of parental uh, participation. In about 89% of our children's homes, um, children continue to get engaged uh, in music making uh, in our assemblies or in our lessons through Zoom. We had amazing feedback following this. And, composition and composing has been in the heart of what we did. It really opened my eyes to absolutely endless opportunities that the children have. I just want to say thank you to Ali and the team for organizing this Teach Meet and for the opportunity to present my ideas. I hope that they will help somebody and thank you once again. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Annie. That was absolutely great. And the thing that comes through is everybody's passion, you know, and the, and the ways that we have really thought about trying to make sure music keeps going all the way through the um, the difficult months, well, the difficult year, I suppose, that we've just had. Um, Ellie's just put up something about using iPads as the basis to explore music with our special ed children. We use uh, the Music Hub ones as well as our own, which is a good tip for anybody, actually, to see if there are other instruments and other sources available. Um, using music specialist time to explore multiple ways using GarageBand and other apps. Um, and there's a recommendation about downloading the music um, matters. It is a brilliant framework, so just going to have a go and look at that. And um, there's a couple of others as well for um, special ed um, that you might want to look at as well, Ellie, and I'll put some links up in a minute. Um, really, really good idea, um, Helen's put about creating the, the character from the book. If anybody's got any specific questions for Annie, um, do they want to put those up while Ella loads up? And then um, we'll move on to Ella's in a minute. We're moving away from composing for, for now and coming back to that. Um, there was so much in there. I was writing things down as, as you went along. I absolutely loved what you said. You said they are creators and imaginers of music, um, which is such a gorgeous thing to think about the children that we have and to make them to feel musical. I think, I think that was crucial. Crucial. I think that. I think that's um, Ella's. Ella's. Well, so we're going to pass it back to Ella. Ella. And any questions, any questions about Annie, of course, of course. So I'm just going to introduce Ella. Ella. She's the she's the and proud Sussex alumni, alumni from 2010. 2010. Um, um, she now works for Bristol Music Beacon, and she's going to talk about the five day music group resource. Thank you so much, Annie. Yes. Um, so, yes, uh, I am the primary music lead here. Um, you may know us as two things. Bristol Plains Music, the Bristol Beacon. We are the hub for Bristol. Um, I've worked in primary schools, secondary schools, and spent a lot of time working and teaching for hubs. Um, as I joined the uh, organization in January, um, promoting well-being into our schools and uh, with our young people was an immediate topic of discussion within the team. Um, and that has led to us creating this uh, five a day music resource, a recovery resource for schools. Um, we undertook this by uh, first taking a look at what, the, what was out there already 
My colleague, uh, Julia Picciani, took a literature review and we were looking at a range of materials um, from uh, things such as uh, the chemical effects of creativity on the brain, right through to issues such as social, social prescribing and how that might help us with our recovery moving forward in response to the pandemic. Um, so she pulled together relevant and useful data, which really helped to shape our resource. Um, after compiling all this relevant information, we then set about creating an inclusive resource for schools to use as part of their everyday routines to promote well-being and recovery through the arts and especially uh, music. Having taught in primary schools throughout the pandemic, um, we know that schools and children are very resilient, but we also needed to recognize and create spaces where they can safely explore their emotions and feelings and the arts and music create a fantastic space for this to happen. The five a day music resource aims to provide a framework for teachers to create these spaces in their classrooms, along with the recommendations of trusted and established music educational resources. Um, I'm just going to play a clip of um, Kirsten uh, Cunningham. She is the deputy head teacher of Hawfield Primary, uh, which is um, an outstanding school for music in this area. She's discussing her response to the resource and how they are including it in their planning for September. At Hawfield, we're really excited about using the five-a-day music resource and integrating it into our planning for September. We all know that healthy minds matter, and this is a wonderful resource to thread it into all aspects of our learning at school. The singing, playing, moving, creating and listening strands are so crucial to our children, particularly at the moment. It fits in beautifully with our planning in September. The super simple structured ideas promote music and creativity. We love the idea of the power of playlists and also the links that give us invaluable pointers towards how we can integrate this into our curriculum. I, um, I then asked her about her plans for recovery, uh, supporting recovery in September. One of the important focus for us in September will to be look at how we support children to recover from the time that they've lost in their learning. The five a day music resource is an excellent way of integrating positivity, inclusion and whole classes working together, whether it's listening, creating, moving, singing or playing. OK, so I'm now just going to briefly take you through the resource. Obviously, there is uh, lots for you to digest, so I'm not going to take you through every single bit, but I'm just going to pick out some highlights and things that we um, especially love about our resource. So um, at the beginning here, um, I just want to point out one of these statistics that kind of uh, jumped out at us that 44% of children have decreased the amount of time they spend on hobbies and activities during lockdown. So um, if you just think about that, they had essentially, and all of us essentially had more time, but actually spending less of that time on things that they enjoy and that they love. So that's something that was uh, really key and important for us to highlight. Um, in uh, our five a day activity menu, um, you will have heard Kirsten reference the power of playlists there. We have decided to um, create uh, special playlists to inspire um, schools to use these resources. So I'm just going to follow these one of these links. So these are all live links that will take you to a Spotify playlist of inspired listening. So I think we will have a look at create quickly. So this is our create playlist. Um, it was a collaborative effort to ensure that we had a range of musical tastes and, uh, and musical genres represented. And um, this is our little create playlist. Obviously, these playlists are um, available for everyone to take away. You can then edit them and use them differently in your own schools. Um, so there is a different playlist for each of these, which is really lovely. Um, then we start to go through each of the um, aspects of uh, five a day for us. So we've chose uh, singing, play, move, create and listen. And I'm just going to stop and focus on listen for a second. 
Um, obviously, all of these aspects we think are very important, but um, taking the time to listen in any way, shape or form is something that can really help um, children to focus um, on something else other than them, uh, other what they can hear around them. So um, some excellent resources that we've got here, um, pointing towards Minute of Listening. Um, uh, that's a project run by Sound and Music, who are one of our partners, and you can sign up. And they have snippets of different listening, not necessarily music, so not like our playlists, but snippets of different soundscapes that um, your children can access and listen to. So you can work your way through these uh, five different ideas. Here, we've created um, some menu ideas. So we really like the idea of this five a day, like our five a day of fruit and vegetables. We're going to take five a day creative activities and sprinkle them through our teaching day. Um, these three plans that we've come up with are guidelines. They are, you know, they are to be edited. They are to be tested. They are to be adapted to your schools. So these are three, um, we came up with three different menu ideas print this out, have it on hand, test them out and to try them um, in your schools and see how they work out. Um, these are all based on those five um, elements that we have put into our resource. So you can mix and match those. Um, and uh, moving on to the end of the resource here, um, these are our expansion activities. These expansion activities are designed to help children to become uh, more reflective. So the other, um, the other activities were more about whole class uh, benefits. These are about uh, children really focusing on themselves and what makes them special. Um, we have a few expansion activities. Uh, just a quick note to highlight that um, this particular activity um, was adapted from uh, some work done by Holly Stoppett. So we have uh, credited her and I just want to thank her again. She describes herself as a drama therapist and a clown among other things. So it was really nice to get that element of drama into, um, into this resource. Obviously as we're as a music hub, we were looking to other specialists to collaborate on, on these ideas of different creative aspects. Um, these um, activities are really lovely for children to focus on themselves and what makes them them. Um, they're really suitable for small group or individual activities, allowing them to reconnect with what makes them unique. This links back to the statistic at the beginning of the resource, whereby 44% of students are spending less time on hobbies and activities. And often these activities create part of their identities. I know if I couldn't attend my choirs and orchestras as a child, I would have felt that significant part of what makes me me would have been lost and I'm not sure how I would have coped in that situation. So we're really trying to put together some activities here that allow children to remember and to put into themselves what makes them them. So looking widely now, not just at music, but all of these different things that make them them. So it's really a lovely resource with lots of different things to dip in and out of if you want to look at these more um, detailed activities, these extension activities, or if we want to just, if I go back to our menus and just take these menus and take the ideas of menus and just pop them into your classroom routines. Um, just widely, uh, the resource has been widely shared, uh, which is great, um, from schools um, to ABRSM to other music hubs. We've been able to share our work, which is great. Um, we're particularly excited to work with Marthenshire Hub and to try and facilitate a Welsh language work version, which is great. Um, so that's a real a summary, and I really do urge you to just take it and uh, have a look through and really highlight things that are going to work for, for you in your classrooms or share to those who you think it, it will. So um, that is the resource there. So thank you. Thank you so much, Ella. I, I don't think uh, I, I don't there's think any um, there's any problem that people are going to be looking at the comments. It's absolutely bad. I will. Uh, I'm. I'm very happy to feedback to the team. It was. Uh, it was a. It was a definitely a team effort. There was lots of uh, different ideas and um, experiences put in. So you had the teaching staff here, but we also have um, wider community practitioners feeding into it as well. So I'm sure they'd be love. Uh, really, really pleased to hear that. Yeah, and I'm sure you're going to get some questions back to once everybody's back to once, had, um, had the opportunity um, to look at it. The opportunity to look at it. Fab. Thank you. Thank you. What we're going to do? Thank you. What we're going to, um, Ella, if we can get you to mute. 
um, that might stop the feedback. Um, that's great. Thank you. Ella, that was absolutely brilliant. I could hear myself and the feedback coming back and saw the comments on that too. Um, we're going to go just into breakout rooms, actually, for about five minutes, because I think one of the lovely things about the Teach Me is meeting a teacher, saying hello. Um, so whilst Ella's been talking, our lovely Maria's been um, beavering away in the background, um, putting us into some groups. And if there's any questions that you want to, to type up coming back from those, um, but just got five minutes um, to go and meet. I think we're going into a groups of about four and then we're going to come back and we've got a presentation from Dan to come afterwards so um yeah if you if you want to go and introduce yourselves and if you want to put up any questions afterwards then i'm sure the presenters will also be very very happy to um facilitate them them then ella i think you're going to get questions once people have had a really good old nose around thank you brilliant um so, so maria if you can do the magic for us um, that's the way we're doing it at the moment um so then in year, by the time they get to year one they've explored lots of the instruments on our trolleys they've got They've got their own instruments in uh, their music area. And so now we're kind of trying to organize it a little bit more carefully. So now we've got, we're talking about pitch um, and we use um, Haydn's The Bear because it obviously links to the bears in Goldilocks and the Three Bears. And uh, this is, an all the activity here is kind of lifted from Music Express. Um, and uh, most of our curriculum was kind of based on Music Express, but I just kind of tweaked it here and there. So they uh, explore pitch through their voices, they explore pitch with um, instruments, they um, begin to kind of, if I, does this work now? Yeah, so they, they make their daddy bear sounds and their baby bear sounds, then they come up and they make an actual score on the, on the screen and then we perform their score. Um, and then it goes, like I have these printed out and they can go and do it in, on their own at the table as well. They have their own scorecards and they move, the, move it around to all, just different ways to kind of organize the sound reading so that they get used to the idea of the sound that I'm listening to is, is being recorded here or I'm perform, responding to the visuals that I can see. Um, and then, oh, this, that's just lifted completely from Music Express, a little song there. Um, and we try and, um, so the composition is it's more than just picking up the song, picking up music now. We, we're kind of trying to say, right, what are you trying to do with it? What are you trying to, what kind of sound are you trying to make? Are you trying to make a, a low sound, a high pitch sound? Is there a story? Um, there is an expansion of this activity where they think of their own kind of bear story and maybe bear falls over and he's got his high pitch voice. So then we have that sound first and, and they make the score and then they make the music. Um, I try with all the music, all the story based composition that that we do, I try to um, perform it with the story go ongoing and then you take the story away and then we just have the music left so the children can kind of try and track the music while, as they're listening. Um, so that's so pitch. I'm just going to go whiz through here because I've got loads more to come. So. Um, at this point in key stage one, this is our music appreciation form. It's kind of, um, they don't handwrite this. It's, it's all verbal. It's all done at the start of the lesson um, and the start of assemblies. It just kind of um, structures the talk about what they're listening to. When they get into key stage two, um, and I have dropped this on the end of the presentation, so you'll be able to see that in key stage two, there's an actual kind of pro forma that they, that they do. And at the start of every single music lesson, they come in, they're listening to a piece of music and they know well, they've got to listen. What instruments can I hear? What mood is it? Um, is there anything I notice about the elements, etc. So that just kind of runs through all of the music that you can see. Um, hot cross buns, very, very nice for, for sort of graphic scoring. Um, so they kind of get used to uh, what, what the patterns the patterns of the notes are showing you. And there's kind of activities that, you know, they, they listen to the song and they try and put them in the correct sequence. But what's really nice about that then is that I give them um, the actual uh, pitches there. And obviously then they're just kind of giving you a kind of um, general high, low and in the middle. And then I'll give that out to the children. And they just, I say, find a high note, find a, uh, a low note, find one in the middle. And then they just start to sort of build their own compositions based on just the pattern of what they see. So like it's their own version of hot cross buns um, after they've played it. And then we move up into year two where so I know I'm whistling through this, but this is just, this, I've got two minutes left, let's go. Um, so then we're looking at describing animals using sound. So year two is about three billy goats gruff. 
Um, and we begin by looking at each character of the of the Billy, three Billy Goats Gruff. Can they come up with a melodic phrase that is that character's kind of motif that gets repeated throughout the whole thing? Um, so we start by looking at pictures of animals, trying to describe the animals with sound in lots of different ways. Um, and then we tell the story. Um, have I on soundscapes as well. Soundscapes comes part of it because they, they're obviously they're in a really miserable place where it's rocky, it's brown, there's no grass left. And we try and describe that through sound compared with the lush green meadow on the other side of the bridge. Um, and soundscape is a, is a separate unit that, that we do in music. So they're kind of just pulling the strands together um, into the composition. And so we start with these. These are the visual stimuli for the soundscapes before we then um, create our, un, what we call it an underscore for the, um, for the three bit of goat's gruff. And then, oh, that's the listing map that they create. They create these with their groups just to make little notes of the story. So the story is just basically from Twinkle. Um, and so I just copied and pasted those and then they, they explore the different sounds that they make for each part of the story. Um, we tell the story along with the underscore, and then we try and play the underscore without the story and the children kind of tell the story in their own minds is kind of the, the thought process behind that. Um, and then culminating in year three, when they get up to year three, we look at, um, they have a pirate theme. Um, and so now we're looking at um, mu uh, rhythm, pitch, um, organizing sounds, um, and we kind of pull it all together by, um, the easiest one to look at is, oh, that's just, that's an example of graphic scoring that, that we do. Uh, here we go. So all class three, all at sea, I just printed out little pictures from the book that have like sounds. So we've got the seagulls pooing, the donkeys dancing, walking the plank and splashing. They um, work in groups to create sounds that match these, and then they can sequence the story, come up with their own story. Um, and so it's just, finding ways to sort of, all, um, I think it was, I think it was Vaughan who said in the first presentation about giving them confidence to be creative through structure. And this just kind of gives them um, a bit of a structure to be able to create their own scores. Oh, and then we evaluate it. Um, and I think I'm nearly there because my number 10 minutes has gone up. Um, but uh, all of that, I feel, should be fairly straightforward and, and self-explanatory. If not, do feel free to take my email and um, I'm happy to answer any questions. That's me. Brilliant, Dan. Thank you so much. I should explain that um, when Dan and I were in communication by email, um, Dan had like loads of different ideas and we had to just pull out one strand. So I don't know if you want to say something, Dan, about how the story based composing just fits in with what you do more, more generally, because obviously you've kind of taken out little bits of your um, yeah, so so um, so like our music curriculum, as I said, it was originally uh, Music Express. It started off with that's what everyone followed because class because Music Express was quite good for class teachers that didn't have um, a lot of confidence or understanding of music you know, generally. Um, and then we just kind of progressed to this because that was a that was at the point before I became uh, in the part of this role where I'm covering all of the classes in the school. So. Well, the the units the units that we've got this so there's um so there's the there's the whole class sort of instrumental unit um strand I should call strand I should call it so which, which starts in reception in year one with just claves or claves uh, and they they tap along or sometimes we have drums but claves are kind of best because we can we've got enough for everybody um that that then progresses into um, untuned percussion whole class I mean I call it whole class instrumental work because it's it's stuff about rhythm and working together and, and improvising uh, within structures very similar to some of the things that we've seen already um, then year three um, they learn how to play pitched percussion um, which is why Vaughan's presentation at the start was going to be really useful for me because some of that some of those um, resources are really useful um, for, for doing that especially with the matching the colors to the boom whackers and the chime bars Year four have a whole class ukulele, year five do whole class steel band, and then in year six, the idea is that they bring everything together as in, in part of their as part of their year six production that we do at the end of the year. So that's um, like the instrumental strand. Then we've got this composition strand. As I explained, listening goes all the way through because it's the sort of stimulus for um, each of the lessons starts with listening. Um, yeah, so everything kind of 
sort of just build it's a little it's a bit like a, somebody mentioned earlier about the spiral curriculum you know what we yeah. don't want to lose what we've already learned in one unit so the idea is that it just it builds and uh, builds on what they've learned already especially because as we know music's very squeezed in the curriculum and in the timetable so yeah. i try and try whatever they've just learned even if it was last term bring it into the into this what we're learning now because it um it helps them remember does yeah, that answer your question? <laughs> understands how that all went together. What um, struck me when you were talking, I just wrote down, we are magpies, basically, us music teachers, because we're all walking around collecting ideas. I mean, I'm not sure how much the, um, the magpies actually adapt their resources, but clearly what we can see today is, you know, magpieing ideas, stealing things from other people and going, oh, I could try that or I could, I could, I could move that. Um, if you've got any specific questions for Dan um, about the things he's got up here, then um, please feel free to, um, to type them uh, into the chat box and um, we'll uh, we'll pick those up. I really liked um, your thing there about using imagery as well and the the kind of the power of of imagery. I mean, you used it in so many different ways for the storytelling and um, for the stimulus and for recognizing the relationship between a sound and a symbol and you know so many ways in which that that comes together. Um, and the other thing I think is that you too have worked with Birmingham Contemporary Music Group. Is that right? Yes. Well, we're uh, we're about to. There's a, they're about to do a two year funded research project, and I think we're part we're part of that. It's been delayed for the last couple of years, but due for obvious reasons. And we're um, doing it as well in Bristol. So hello from the yeah. other side. Oh hi. Yeah, we're I'm... through Birmingham as well. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. So um, we've worked we've worked in a small ways. We use um, instead of Garage Band, we use Sound Plant and like some of the resources on BCMG um that they they published their um the, all the, like lesson plans and lessons and lesson things we had duncan chapman came in and showed us how to use sound plant and it was just it was revolutionary like uh, when annie was explaining earlier about how like the children like put press the button and do do something and they go wow that's my music um it's it's a really nice resource so it's a i think it's very similar to garage band um and is that free to use is yeah it's uh you down just you can just download it yeah brilliant okay um annie's just put something up about um talk about the really good structuring and i think what we can see through everything that we've talked about today you know when um Ofsted talk about intent implementation and impact um that thing about impact and um uh kind of building on building on building on you know and i always have a phrase that i use you know what's the oneness of year one and the sixness of year six and you can really tell in everything that we've listened to today, you know, that we've seen that we've got a really good handle on what's the oneness of one and the sixness of, of six and being able to kind of communicate that to to other people and, and hear it through the um, through the children's music. What's the research project you're about to take part in then? Are we is, is it top secret or are we? Um, I don't. I it, it's to do with composing but I don't I'm not I couldn't yeah. tell you the exact title. Eleanor probably knows better than me. I, I, it's been a long yeah, time so, since I thought about um, it. <laughs> Sound and Music are working with Birmingham Contemporary Music Group and also Birmingham University and facilitating local composers going into primary schools um, over a set amount of so over two years. Um, as the hub here, we're going to facilitate some of that work, and we've uh, we, we're sort of in contact with with Judith and and the schools, and I imagine it works sort of in a similar way over there as well. Um, what's nice about the composing is it's open ending composing so it's not necessarily topic based it's that real a composer coming in and just creating with the students we were also, sorry yeah, we, were, we were very lucky to have them actually when they did the project for the first time they had oh, yes, a yeah. pot of money left over so they came to me agreeing that was before covid we had the musicians there as well and duncan leading it we had it with our year fives and we're welcoming duncan back to do a tree project which is another project that they're doing in uh, our forest school and uh, Sutton Park and other areas. So if you're looking for um, somebody to come and make magic in your school, I would definitely recommend BCMG. Um, they're full of ideas. They also facilitate the arts awards, uh, which is something that you can sell to the parents or the SOT because it adds up this extra feather that we always need to look for to sell our ideas. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you, Annie, for that. Um, Vaughan's just put his uh, resources up. We're going to share everything from today. Anybody who's got anything to share, please send them to either Maria or to Benota, who I've copied into the email earlier that you um, will all have had as um, presenters. Um, and um, yeah, 
I think that, that kind of draws us to the end of where we are. We had a little bit of a, a purposeful focus today on, on the kind of creativity and um, composing, improvising. Um, I like to call it doodling with sounds. Um, and that's because uh, we've had quite a lot of feedback through the ISM, which is the Subject Association of Music. They take professional development really seriously and they've had some uh, some messages from members and from primary teachers around some of the challenges that they find with being able to uh, teach composing, to teach improvising, um, and to use it, you know, in their curriculum and to be able to open it up. So that was kind of a purposeful thing today for me, uh, kind of crafting a few of the things um, behind the scenes to, to look at that in focus. Um, as you may know, this is the first time we've done this. Um, as I was saying earlier, we normally have um, webinars and, and um, seminars, um, but if you've got ideas of things, as I was saying, you know, it's a membership association and it's a subject association. Um, it, it puts on lots of free uh, events. If you go through, you'll find lots of webinars on things around mental health. And I mean, things that we've tangentially touched on today. I've done some things with Martin Fortley that's up there. There's some things on musical understanding, loads of free resources on their website. Um, and here's Maria has very helpfully put about finding out more about the, the ISM um, for us today. But um, what I'm gonna get you to do is if you, um, if you could just switch on your um, microphones just for a minute. Um, and uh, I think on the count of three, we should just give everybody today um, who's presented and shared their, their time so freely and all of their resources, a massive round of applause. So one, two, three. Thank you so much. Um, for joining us and um, having recorded it as well we we also know don't we Maria that a lot of people in fact always pretty much more people look at things afterwards online because a lot of people will be in their staff meetings right now didn't manage to escape um but they'll be uh, looking at stuff too and if there's any specific questions then I'm I'm sure we'll be directing those um straight back to you it's it's so so nice to be able to um bring teachers together to uh, to chat and to share ideas and one of the things we were talking about in our own room was um, when we, we broke out just now about how isolating it can feel and suddenly to find yourself with a bunch of teachers who are like you know super enthusiastic as everybody has been today about the stuff that they do and so willing to share their ideas um, as Emma's put here super informative um, thank you so much so um, yep I think it's gin and tonic time everyone the sun's shining and sunny Brighton so have a good evening and thank you Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. Have a good evening, everyone. Bye.